Uh, we will call to order this meeting, uh, the November 8th, 2023 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, thank you for everyone for attending. Um, if we could stand and uh, give our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Right over the Yes. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I will beg the pardon of the folks here for getting my notes together. Um, this is somewhat unusual in that we normally meet in the other building, and I was expecting to meet in the other building, so I apologize for that. Um, the, uh, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go to executive session, which is, is extremely unusual, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are, exhibits that are being presented. Please notify the chairman, chairman, person, myself, if you are unable to see or hear any of the proceedings or if anything is unclear. Um, we work from a prepared agenda, and again, if you have any comments, questions, etc., please direct them to the chair as part of going through this. Um, there is one tabled agenda item that we will talk about at the end regarding our um, policy for um, uh, remote meetings, and we'll talk about that at the end. But uh, otherwise, there are no other tabled uh, appeal items. Um, in each case, uh, as we go through the appeals this evening, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions for the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the public portion of the hearing, and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It's important to note that if any of the appeal or special exceptions criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or the application. That is to say, we don't have the option to waive any of those items. With that in mind, we'll go into today's agenda, written agenda. Um, first, we'll call the roll. Doreen? Richard Silkman? Here. Peter Feilinger? Here. David Gore? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Christine Snow? Here. And Joseph? Here. Dory. And Kyle Newman is asking. Um, Kyle is a alternate, generally, right? Mm -hmm. So we have all voting members present, correct? Okay. First order of business is the approval of the minutes for October 11th, 2023. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? Are there any comments or questions? Do I have a motion to approve? Thank you, Dave. Second. second from Christine. Uh, we have a second. Um, could I see a show of hands to approve? Vote is unanimous. The uh, approval is done. Um, we had one uh, appeal at the um, October 11th meeting, uh, appeal number 2754, the special exception appeal um, by uh, uh, Danielle Dalkila. Uh, I got her name wrong before and I apologize to her. Um, and Timothy Myers at 104 Fog Road. Um, uh, has everyone had a chance to read the findings of facts? Are there any concerns or any changes? I think they materially represent what we discussed and what we agreed to. So if I have a motion to approve. David, thank you. So moved. Thank you. And Michelle. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, and a show of hands to approve. That is unanimous. <coughs> yes, yeah, this one I'll abstain. Because I wasn't there. So. Understood. Understood. So we have an approval of that uh, final a final um, decision. We'll then move into today's orders of business. Appeal number twenty seven fifty five, a limited reduction of yard size yard size residential appeal by Sharon McKeith and uh, Lauren Connell or Laura Connolly. I'm getting names wrong left and right. I apologize, please. Um, thank you. Right. Um, it, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. You're, you're speaking, if you could have us uh, 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 stand up to the podium there, and you've got some materials. And we have materials? Yes, we've got materials. I'm put it up there. And if you could just let, let us know, um, again, who you are. We, we understand that you're representing, probably. 
I'm uh, Will Macbeth, a 6 Bay Street. I am the wife of Sharon Macbeth and the, the brother-in-law of Laura Connelly. Got it. Great. So um, if you could uh, describe the appeal and, um, and then we'll go through uh, the, the, uh, um, the items required for the special exception. Thank you. Yes, we're here tonight uh, to talk about the limited uh, reduction for a construction of a, a replacement of a one and a half story garage with a one and a half story garage. Um, currently, the existing garage um, is in substantial disrepair. The slab has had a lot of movement, substantial cracking. The building envelope of the, of the garage uh, has substantial water damage as it has broken windows and has been letting water in for some time. And the second floor of the sleeping room is, is substantially um, deflecting and it's really unusable now. The sleeping room has been used in several years and the garage now is becoming unusable because of the, the, the slab movement. So replacement is really what is needed. Unfortunately, the replacement can't happen because we are about just over one foot from the property line. Uh, and so what we're here tonight to do is to apply for a replacement of a two-story garage that using the limited uh, yard reduction. We're asking for the 10 and 10, so a reduction of five feet on the rear yard and five feet on the side yard. Um, when we look at the criteria for that approval that, um, let me switch, and again, I, I, some of you may have that in front of you, um, but the building was built, uh, it's at least recorded as early as 1950, whether it was built in 1950 exactly or not, I don't know, but the site plan and the survey shows that it was recognized in 1950, so certainly before the 1991 uh, date. And just to be clear, this is the structure you're talking about? I'm sorry, the structure we're talking about is right here, that's correct. Uh, I'm sorry, the structure we're talking about, I apologize, is this structure right here. What I'm showing you here is the new structure and the 10-foot setback okay. on either side. So, and the line is a little bit hard to see, but it is dashed and called out where the existing garage sits. So we're moving the building about nine feet toward the street and about five feet toward the side yard property. Um, the building will be the same functionality. It will again be a two car garage with a sleeping room on top. Um, so the functionality is not changing. And it fits, I think, and I'll show you the next picture slide, which I'm afraid might not be in your package. Um, very similar to the other buildings immediately around it. Uh, in terms of the character of the street, uh, Bay Street, uh, for those of you that don't know or haven't had the opportunity to go by, uh, is a street that has several detached uh, accessory dwellings and garages. So uh, this is our house right here, directly across the street is a detached two-car garage. Here's a two -car, uh, one car garage. These are the other two buildings right by us. And I'll bring that to your attention because this is our uh, garage. This and this are both accessory buildings. With garages, you can see the picture below. That's our garage right there. These are the other two accessory buildings. So the three buildings surrounding us, so the four would be our house, a garage, a garage, and a garage. So very similar around. Uh, this building structure is obviously much larger than we're proposing. This one looks to be very, very similar or almost ideal. It's the same kind of structure, same, same architecture. So, and what you can see there in that little red dash line is just the shifting in this diagonal motion to get this off the property line by another nine feet. Um, the reason we can't shift it further is because if we shift it at 15 feet, we collide into the house. So the, really the 10 feet allows us not to hit the house and obviously we can't go any further down from the 15 feet because again, if we didn't take the 10 and 10, we'd be overlapping the house. I think one thing to note is we'll still be 46 feet back from the street. So as you come down Bay Street, it's still going to have very much the same feel as it does. It's going to be 90 feet closer. But as you come down, the garage is not going to make an impact on the experience coming down the street. It'll still stay in keeping, I think, with the other houses on the street that have the same type of structure and, and garage setback and accessory buildings. Um, and I think one of the other criteria is that you're not allowed to start it. We haven't started, and it's still there today. We'll read through the criteria in a moment here. Um, before we do that, though, are there any questions, general questions from the board and from folks? Um, okay, so at this point, and I always apologize to folks, we will ask you to read through the criteria and, and, um, and explain to the, the, uh, your justifications for the criteria for the variance. 
uh, I'm sorry, I do have a question. I, did you, how did you deem that um, there was all this damage? Is it, did you have like a professional come out and look and say, you better rebuild this whole thing? Uh, we did not have a certified report. I'm a licensed architect, so okay. we do a lot of this work, and yeah, it's, it, there, there's not much we're going to be able to say there. Okay. So, um, as you know, there are a number of criteria here. Um, the existing buildings or structures of the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to 1991? Correct. Yes. And, and just to be clear, this is the, the, the building we're talking about. This is not just the house that's on there, but it's the, the, the garage itself. Yes. Okay, got it. Great. Appreciate that. Um, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties as are utilized in the zoning district. I believe they are, and I think I showed the three immediate structures right around us that we don't own except our house. They're all the same, very similar structures. Appreciate that. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to, to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Meet that would be in our existing house. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Uh, we actually think it may be an advantage that we're still further back from the road, not less, and we have moved away from the other two, garage, three garage structures, so we think that's an advantage. And the fifth one is um, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement. We have not. Perfect. Thank you very much. Are there any public comments? Or did we, I'm sorry, um, did we receive any public comments? We did not. We did not. Do we have any comments from the public today? Then with that, if there's no objection, I will close the public comment and open up to discussion among the board. Is that okay? Great. Public discussion is closed. Um, okay, so for the appeal, um, should we just go down through the, do we have any general discussion or should we just go down through the, the items? Just yeah, it feels like this is fairly straightforward. Yeah. So, um, who wants to start us off? I'll start. Terrific. Number one, uh, the, uh, uh, they were erected prior to 1991, I think. In, in the applicant has stated the house was built in 1924. Any further discussion on that? No. Um, got it. I, do you want to vote now or do you want to vote first? You should vote for each one that you take. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, th then um, I believe we could just, uh, t we'll, we'll just use this by voice. Phone. Yeah, okay. that's all we need. Um, just before you do that, I just want to make one, one thing clear. It's the, it's the dwelling that, that has to be built before 1991 because this is an accessory building to the dwelling. Okay, that's so just to clarify. That's helpful, actually. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. So yeah. I don't think it matters in this case, but just so you know. Yeah, no, that, that, that is helpful for the future. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so uh, are we in agreement? Can I ask for just a, a show of hands? That's a unanimous show of hands for the first one. Number two, um, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The existing garage is failing and the structure needs to be replaced and uh, the request is no less necessary than being able to replace it what they currently have. And they're actually improving the the location of the garage. Any other comments or suggestions? I think that sums it up fairly well. So if I could have a show of hands, do we agree on this? That is unanimous. Uh, due to the physical features of the lot and or, and or location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Um, yeah, as you've shown that you, if you rebuild it, 
right exactly where it is. It's going to be so close to the lot. Um, I think that the policeman, you've put a lot of thought into it and is actually an improvement for the lot funds. Any other comments? I'll just add that, that uh, it is, the, the app has also shown that this is pretty much endemic of this neighborhood. All the, all, all the surrounding lots have similar garage or, or, or auxiliary um, uh, building placement issues. So I think this is this is meant. Could I see a show of hands for this? Unanimous. David, number four. <coughs> the impact <coughs> or the effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of building or structures which conform to the yard size requirements. <coughs> Actually, uh, this will be more conforming uh, as the post structure is, uh, is moved forward away from the property line. This sits virtually on the property line. Um, at the same time, uh, there is a setback on the front yard of 46 feet, which is uh, far enough back that has no impact on the neighbors across the street. So this actually makes it more conforming. Any further discussion on that one? Show of hands to approve. There we go. Okay, that's unanimous as well. The final one is that uh, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering an after, after the fact application. And I think we've established that, and Brian, you can confirm yep. that as well. Yes. So a show of hands that that is met. That is unanimous as well. Okay. So if I could at this point have a motion to uh, approve the appeal. So both, David, thank you very much. I have a second. Richard, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Could I see a show of hands for, or actually we'll call a roll on this one. If we could uh, call a roll for the, uh, for the vote. Mr. Silkman? Yes. Peter Feinlander? Yes. Steve Yes. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. Christine Snow? Aye. And it is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for going through the, the process. Thank you so much. And thank you to the <laughs> Okay. And we have a second limited reduction of the yard side appeal. Appeal number 2756, appeal by Mike Richmond of Custom Concept. Oh, <laughs> he's not going over there right away. Okay. Um, good to see you again, uh, Mike. Uh, on behalf of Neil and Heather James Jameson, I'm guessing that's Jameson, right? Uh, 21 River Sands Drive. I think of all the people, we do not need to go through the drill with you. <laughs> Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts uh, Architecture. Um, I'm here on behalf of my clients tonight, dealing uh, Heather Jacobson, uh, Jameson, sorry, right here in the crowd. I'll start this up right. Um, but we're here requesting a limited reduction of yard size, size to allow for vertical, vertical expansion uh, on the front of their home, the portion that would fall within the setback. This parcel is located on the inland side of Riverside Drive. It contains an existing home, gravel driveway, deck, stairs, shed, and the lot is pretty much flat. Uh, the Jamesons wish to transform their cottage into a year-round home by constructing an addition off the rear of the structure, which completely complies, uh, and by adding taller walls and a steeper roof onto the existing structure. Uh, the layout that we presented is the most practical approach to the project that we could find uh, after looking into many different options. Uh, we did look at tearing down the entire structure and replacing it, but it was really economically unfeasible. We did look at ways to go up higher, but leave the small section from the front that's over the setback at its current height. Uh, and we just could not find a design that was I guess practical, we couldn't justify it. Uh, it just would have been out of character in the neighborhood. 
So after a lot of work, communication with Mr. Longstaff, I stand, um, I stand here tonight. I do want to make a small note that the existing cottage, as you can see on some of these photos, it does have a pretty large overhang that projects out towards the road. With the new design, our overhang would actually be cut back by almost a foot. So technically, we would be moving back from the road by about a foot. So basically, the request before you is, uh, is to allow us to go up just on the front right corner of the home, directly on top of the existing structure, no horizontal expansion. Uh, so it's efficient. We want to repurpose as much of the existing frame as possible and have it fit into the neighborhood as, as best we can. So with, with that, I'll, I'll answer any questions. Mike, you know here that is the parcel is partially within the shoreland overlay, and these questions always confuse me, Brian, and I apologize, but I might ask for your help on this as well. Is the shoreland overlay um, a barrier or a boundary indicated on this at all, or do we know where that is? Or? I do. This diagonal line right here, Okay. anything forward of that is considered in the shoreland zone. Forward of that, okay. Yeah, correct. Forward of that. So the, technically the portion I'm requesting is within the shoreland zone. Got it. Okay. And Brian, is there anything we have to worry about from that perspective? No, actually what Mike is, is showing or demonstrating to you is that we're not increasing. Shoreland zone doesn't care about the height. Well, we do, but that far back from the water, mm -hmm. height is not an issue as long as it conforms with the town's height. Okay. So footprint is what matters, yep. and they're not increasing the footprint. As you can see, that diagonal line, everything, they're actually borrowing some pieces of that and, and putting it behind the shoreline zone. So it's not an issue from a shoreline zoning perspective. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, sorry to start off and then interrupt anything else from the board. That was, I always get confused by that um, as, as chair. But it, are there questions? Well, I'll just look up for right now. Uh, I have a question that I'm still trying to form, but I'm going to just spit it out. Um, is, so this isn't actually going to be a third level. It's just going to be an expansion of the second floor. Is that correct? Or am I looking at this wrong? You are, you are correct. In fact, if you can see this sketch, the existing building is basically two stories with a pretty low roof on it. Okay. The new one here would be the same two so stories. So it's taller. It's just, it, it's just a little taller. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that space um, that you would maybe call the third floor there, is that actually going to be usable at, or is it just Attic or cathedral right. space. Okay. Okay. No, no floor space. And how many other, um, well, I guess you can see this right here. I, no, no questions. <laughs> Anything else for our colleagues? No? Okay. Um, I have no further questions, so Brian, was there any public uh, comment that we received? We received no public comment. Gotcha. Is there any public comment from Mr. Jerry? No, uh, should, shouldn't uh, he go through the questions? Actually, you're right. Yes, it should. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, we will now go through the um, the, uh, the, the the same requirements for the limited um, uh, uh, appeal here um, as we went through before. So um, we'll start with number one, the existing buildings are structures on a lot for which the limited reduction of yard size resident um, appeal is requested or a record prior to 1991 or the lot is a vacant not conforming lot of record. Yes, according to town records, the home was constructed prior to 1991. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, currently the structure, so currently the cottage is a full two-story structure. With this relief, the structure would still only be a two-story structure, albeit a little taller, and would be similar to other properties in the zoning district. In fact, it would still be smaller in height and scale to other properties in the area. 
due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot. It would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirement. No, despite our efforts, this is the most practical approach we could find. We looked into a design that removed the whole cottage and started with a new fully compliant structure but found the cost of this approach not to be feasible. We then tried various different roof designs to avoid the need for this relief, but could not find a design that was practical to construct or that would be aesthetically beneficial to the neighborhood. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially dis different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. No, it will not. Many of the similar properties in the immediate area are of similar scale or are much larger than the proposed design. And finally, uh, the applicant has not commenced construction of the uh, northern building. Okay, and we've had uh, again, no public um, comment. There's no you may go for it. Thank you. Mr. Richmond, on uh, question number three, uh, have you actually quantified the differential cost between the proposed uh, renovation of, of the uh, project to tear down uh, and replace them? Can you give us a, a number that you came up with? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, scientifically, we did not. But we, the clients and I, got to a point where replacement was hundreds of thousands more than what we're proposing to do. All right. So uh, as you, you know, you're obviously an experienced architect. So, in your professional opinion, this would have been an initial two hundred thousand dollars in cost. Absolutely yes. Thank you. Oh yes. And then the last thing that you did mention the uh, photographs that you provided, but um, as I look at the photographs. Even with the elevated roof line and everything else you can see, this is still not as high a prominent or large a structure for that side of Pine Point as versus other buildings in the area. Agreed. Okay. Okay, with that, um, any other questions from the board? Nothing else from the public? We'll close the public comment. And um, we'll go through this one by one again. Um, we'll start with Richard. <coughs> well, the first one is the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential was requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, where the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Um, yes, the home was constructed in 1978, so it meets that criteria. Any other comments on that one? A show of hands to agree with that analysis. Verified in fact, thank you very much. Uh, that's unanimous. Um, I'll hand over to sure. Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner to occupy the property, use, um, and enjoy the property essentially in the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, the answer uh, to that is uh, yes. Uh, the requested reduction does not increase the existing non-conforming footprint, but rather allows the cost <coughs> increase uh, in roof height to accommodate a second story according to current standards. And um, so this actually improves the functionality of the home. Uh, yeah. I'd also observe on this one that, that, again, this section of Pine Point has quite a few houses which have two, two if not three stories and roof features, et cetera, that are quite prominent. So in terms of being similar to other um, uses in the, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the zoning district, I think this definitely falls within what's expected of that portion of Pine Point. So any other questions or comments? Great. We have a show of hands for that final fact. Unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Michelle. Due to the physical feature of the lot and or location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys looked at different designs, you know, removing it completely, building a new one, and that's going to be significantly, significantly more expensive. Um, changing the roof line will be aesthetically pleasing, um, and 
this design that you're presenting um, looks like is the final one that's feasible, most feasible for the project. Any other thoughts, comments? And I would also add that we actually, although nobody will ever notice this, but we actually moved the boundary back a little bit. We actually gained about, what, six inches a foot? A foot. About a foot. So, as I said, nobody will ever, ever notice it. We do gain a foot. Agreed. Any other comments or a uh, show of hands for finding the fact? Terrific. Thank you very much. Um, Christine? The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. It is not creating a more of an impact on the neighborhood or on the lot, and um, it's in scale with the other houses that are still smaller than most of properties around it and uh, they've done their best to conform with the yard size requirements and they've done okay. Great. And again to Richard's earlier point, it won't be noticed, but they, they did smidge the property back uh, uh, to be a bit more in conformance. So we appreciate that effort. Thank you. Um, any other discussion or can I see a show of hands for the final fact please? Thank you, unanimous. And last one, Joe. Sure. Pretty easy. Uh, the applicant does not commence construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which a limited reduction in size in yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after, after the fact application. As the applicant has stated, they have not commenced construction. And Brian can confirm. Thank you, confirm. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Can I see a show of hands and to confirm that final fact? Thank you. That was unanimous as well. Um, is there any further discussion? If I might then see a motion to approve. Thank you, David. So moved. Michelle, thank you for a second. Um, uh, and we'll call the roll. Richard Silkman? Yes. Peter Feinlinger? Yes. David Bork? Yes. Joseph Stevenson? Yes. Christine Aye. Terrific. That appeal is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for going through the process. We appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thanks, as always. Brother. And um, I always love the simple. <laughs> um, okay, so we do have um, the, 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 the ongoing table issue of what this town status is on our, whether we have effectively guidance or whether we have a, an official town policy yet or on. Yeah, sure. I checked with Tody uh, Justice today. Uh, it's on the uh, council's radar, but of course they're electing a new council. A new council is just being seated tonight. It's a little premature sure. to expect them to take that up, and it probably won't be taken up. I'm going to guess until the new year, probably sometime. So I think we could safely come back and visit it. We, we may have to table it again one more meeting. Okay. Uh, but and I, they may surprise me. They may take it up in December, but they've got a lot of pressing business to do. So okay. I think it's probably January. So we will table it again. I think is what we will. What we should do. <coughs> if you remind me again, why we just can't adopt it? I because it because of the new legislation, our our guidance from the legal counsel was that the town council may, because of the new legislation, if the town council. Uh, adopts according to the new legislation they adopt for the entire town not we won't be able to have individual board policies yeah. and I think that's I, I haven't read the legislation that's what I'm being told so yeah, and, and I, I think Richard's got a good question though legitimately this is going to continue on to say January or probably February or March um, and it's the winter so we have potential um, uh, Assets. I mean, it just, it just the nature of, of folks living in Maine in the winter. Um, do we want to adopt any changes now, knowing that that may be superseded in three months or in two months, um, or do we want to just continue with how we're going? And, and I'll be honest, I, I am completely agnostic on this one. I will, I will defer to the wishes of the board on this. <clears throat> Based on what we have in the policies that we've been given. Individual boards have discretion currently. Currently, yeah. Now, 
<clears throat> if individual boards have discretion currently, it strikes me that we would have the same discretion. No, no, you're, you're, you're right. We do. It's just a matter of do we want to change it, knowing that it will could or will be superseded in four or five months. Like I said, I, I, I'm we're, we're moving more in conformity with the rest of the boards and even the council to some extent in terms of this policy. So, I mean, my preference just for clarity for the winter is to just well, let's just do this, adopt it, and if at some point in the future it's superseded, it's superseded. But I mean, we have the opportunity to do it, so my purpose would be to do it. I, 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 I agree. I mean, if we're moving closer to the policies of the other boards in town, um, and at the same time we feel like this will enable this board to better uh, performance duties, especially given, as you said, Peter, with the, the, the winter and the, the travel and relocation that people have, it seems to me that it's a reasonable step to take. I'm certainly willing to entertain motions, so yeah. Uh, I just have, <coughs> pardon me, but, um, just one, one question I would have. <coughs> if uh, we have a situation where there's, we have inclement weather or whatever, we should happen. Uh, we still have business to, con to conduct. Uh, wouldn't we still have the option of going forward? We do, and I think that, that, that and we, even with our existing policy, we can go full remote for a declared state emergency and for weather emergencies. I think that was always kind of a, 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 a that was always a blanket option for us to to, to, to do a full zoom. The um, the question that we got is, do we do the partial? Do we allow the partial? I think hybrid is really getting into a, a potentially problematic situation, and I feel I would feel more comfortable with sticking with what we have now, which is either one or the other, either it's all in person or it's all in one or the other, depending on the circumstances. Um, and, and then wait until we get some guidance from the town council regarding you know, what, what they're going to deem to be the uh, policy for the entire town. I still see a need to make any changes to what we have because we do have the comment, the, we do have the ability to be able to go fully remote. So just a question on that. So just for my own understanding, do we have the ability to go full remote um, even if there is not some winter you know, uh, weather emergency or some other state of emergency that's been declared? I don't believe I don't going from memory right now on the policy, but I don't believe so. I think we, we, we look to the state or to the town as a basically, if the town shuts down um, town hall, um, then 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 we then, and we have business to attend to. We can go full um, uh, full. Remote. So the policy as written today would not allow us in the event that several of us were traveling, were away, couldn't meet in person. It wouldn't allow us to simply say, "Well, we're going to go fully remote for that." Meeting. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and we elected as a as, as a board to make that decision. Essentially, we we, we 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 said that unless the entire town has to go remote, then um, the nature of our proceedings as as a quasi legal uh, quasi legal um, board <coughs> um, uh, argued for ensuring uh, in, in person meetings. So. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I mean, the, the existing policy that we have does not allow for partial remote. The Scarborough Planning Board policy does. Does, right. And what we had looked at doing in the past before we tabled it was mirroring the language that's in the Scarborough Planning Board. And so we have in front of us, before it was tabled, a modification of our existing policy that would allow for individual members of the board due to illness or physical inability to attend or traveling to participate remotely. And so what I would like to do is move that we accept that draft 
with the language that we had proposed the last time before tabling it for consideration? Well, we, we have a motion before us. Do we have a second? No. Uh, I, I, I'd just like to add a comment. Yeah. We, we have a, a board consisting of five voting members, regular voting members, and two alternates. So we have a total of seven. Uh, and the important number that we really need to look at is what's a quorum? A quorum is four. So we can have we can afford to have three people absent, and we still have a quorum. Uh, and it's, it's, and we really have not had a problem with this in the past. As, as long as we've been fully staffed, we haven't always been fully staffed, but we are now. And I just don't see a need to make any changes whatsoever, given the fact that we do have uh, you know enough members that we could potentially have three members, have three members absent for whatever reason. Okay, and yet we can still open up business. What's, what's the point of making a change when in just a, 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 a few months? Is there, you know, is there no second to the motion? Because if there isn't, we can, we can forget it. But if it's second, then we should vote. With, 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 with that comment, because I, I would actually like to say we've got a motion on, on the floor. Do we have a second? Is it alternate? Can I second it? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will second it. I think just because we haven't had a problem with it in the past, that it does mean that we won't. And it doesn't also mean that we have to use it every single time. I like having something in place that gives us this opportunity. I agree, though, David. I don't think that we generally have an issue. I don't even know if we have ever, since I've been on the board, had an issue. But. Um, but I, I'll, I'll be in support of that. <coughs> I, I've been, okay. I think we'll be I will say this. I've been here longer than any of the rest of the members. <laughs> and for the entire time that I've been here, whether we've been fully staffed or not, we've never had a situation where we didn't have a quorum. Never. First off, we, we, we have a second, so we're now discussing amongst ourselves. Yeah, so, exactly. exactly. That's what you're talking And yeah. the other second. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, Christy. Um, so, um, and Joe, you're, would, you're, you're welcome to contribute here too. Just would this us. function only, but, but Mr. Silverman, you're thinking of when you're away in the winter. Or if anybody is, if okay. somebody's indisposed right. or Peter's right. away but, and traveling. So does this or? only kick in if we need the forum? No, it does not. If we need the it, it, it basically um, so no, it does not kick in only because we need a quorum. So um, we could have a quorum in person, but in other words, four people in person, and a fifth member who can't attend could then ask to dial in, and they would be part of the voting uh, group for that evening. And I think we also discussed one of the previous meetings that. We may have somebody that's traveling and just decides, uh, you know, I've got something else planned and, and I can't attend. So therefore, the, the quorum is just four people that are in attendance, right? But it gives some flex. I guess my point is it gives some flexibility uh, to the board to make sure that in the rare instance where we run into a situation where we can't get a quorum person, we've got the ability to still hold them. Any other comments? And then also, whatever we do decide today is likely going to change if we want to anything. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I don't think we do, do I think we either do it or don't. I, I don't have a super strong feeling about it, but I, I do think that the, this is the way that things are going to start to go, so why not just get on board with it now? But that's me. I, I, I'm really okay either way. I, 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 I'm, I'm good. It will literally be a game time decision for how I vote on this one. The uh, the the the, the, comment, the only comment is I have a feeling, given what happened with the election yesterday, um, that this could drag out for more than a few months, um, given what's before the town council and what, and what I just heard when I went to the wrong um, room on, on the way over here. Um, this is not a this is not an easy time for our town council to come to consensus on anything, let alone Zoom. Um, uh, and I also have fond memories of, uh, of, of, of David's um, uh, tropical background on, uh, on his <laughs> so I actually 
almost want to open this up to allow him to be on Zoom as much as possible. Um, but um, with that, I think we probably should just vote on this and move on one way or the other rather than continue to table it. So, um, I'm sure you're going to do Sure, yeah. I, I have a lot of sway to vote one way or the other. I, I would like your guitar collection. I, I have encouraged the board to adopt the, you know, the remote policy like every other board in town mm -hmm. initially. The board wanted to be the unicorn and be different. <laughs> and so I, that was fine. It, it dawns on me, though, now that I've seen other boards do the, the uh, hybrid meeting, they have staff to, to do that. For example, the planning board has, yeah. has another person that runs, in addition to the staff that serves the board, we don't have staff. So I'm going to have to figure out how that works. And so selfishly, I'd like to delay that decision <laughs> as long as humanly possible until we're forced to do it anyway. Because I think we're, we'll end up getting there. I think that's the way that the town council will probably end up going. We appreciate staff comment. Um, so that, that's just a second. Yeah. Is that, what, what is the issue? Of so I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Now I'm going to have to do this and watch the hands raised in the remote yeah. session actually and run the Zoom. Run the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen automatically. Somebody has to man that. We don't have that extra person. And, and, and the, the person other who's running the councils are doing it. They have a separate person dedicated just right. for that. Not mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So in addition right. to the 80 person yeah. who's filming, so. does change a little bit. Well, how did we handle this when we were doing Zooms? We were all remote. We were all on Zoom. Yeah. So everything, all I, I was doing this and right? Zoom was just automatic. I, we, exactly. And, and so in other words, we, we didn't have an AD person at that point either. Because the AD person wasn't, he, he didn't film anything. You were just recording, you were just clicking the record feature on the Zoom. Every, everybody was Zoom, so. It was, it was just more. And, and I think that, and, and I didn't have to watch this room or do do this stuff. It was all, and, and and I think that's one of the reasons why, or among my other, other reasons, I think the, the primary reason was we prefer for the nature of our board to be in person. Um, but but that's one of the reasons why we decided it's either or, either everyone's in, um, or 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 everyone's in person. So just I have curiosity, Brian. Would we expect if the town council adopts this change that we expect in a few months and it impacts how this board acts going forward in our policies. Will we have an expectation that there's additional staff available to allow us to do these or are we, are we, are we, In other words, are we just delaying your pain? You're delaying the pain. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, one more point. Okay. The issue is hybrid. Okay. Hybrids are harder to do. And, and I, I agree with Brian's point. You know, when you go either live, all live, or all remote on Zoom, it's, I mean, those are manageable. Hybrid is really, you know, a lot more difficult. Yeah. And I will add one more point, and I'm not saying this would ever happen here, but look at what's happening in Portland right now with their hybrids. They've had nothing but problems. Oh, I, did, I, don't, I didn't know that. What is happening in Portland? Oh, yeah, they, 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 they uh, consistent, constant Zoom bombing. Oh, um, yeah. Well, which well, happens on the it happens on the remote. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, I tell that story a lot. <laughs> that was a great. Yeah, that was, um, <laughs> we yeah, had some yeah. good ones. So. Okay, okay. I, I think we, if I if I may, I think we have talked about this to the point where we, we know. We're, um, Doreen, let's call a roll and call me last. Mr. Yes. David Port. No. Joe Stevenson. Look, I know I seconded it, but I'm actually a no now. Christine Snow? No. And Peter Franklin, I'm sorry. I need to say no and not be the deciding vote, because um, I that's a tough one. But thank you, and thank you for everyone's conversation. Richard, I appreciate you keeping us honest and keeping us down the pathway on this one. Um, and uh, no or yes? How's it going? So it's four to one. Uh, or one to four. One to four, yeah. I'm sorry, Richard. That put me over the edge with the, the lack of... Yeah. Well, I didn't want to, I didn't want that to influence. Them. No, I just wanted to I, bring that up. Well, I think it's an important point. We, 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 
talk about it a lot. We're, we're good with it. Thank you, everyone, and I appreciate, again, and, and, and Richard, I appreciate you for keeping us on, on, on a loop here. And we'll see. My guess is sometime next year we'll get some guidance from the town council. I don't think it's in February. I think it's in after the June election. I know we have points like that. It's going to be after June, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, are there any other comments to them? Before we do it, Jerry, I, yeah, yeah. I circulated an email to the folks about voting and who gets to vote and yes. alternates. And it struck me as I was thinking about this meeting, as it turns out it was irrelevant because Kyle wasn't here anyway. Right. But it, it, the policy has always been to appoint a, an alternate for the full term of the meeting. Right. But in point of fact, we don't have to do that. In fact, there have been occasions when a board member has recused himself or herself, and the alternate has been brought up to vote on that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that where we have a situation where a member is absent for a meeting, but in the subsequent meeting we have votes related to that meeting, and the alternate who voted in that meeting is present, then we should elevate that alternate for the purposes of voting on those items. So those would include the minutes and any uh, final decisions and appeals that would be made. The alternative is that the person who, the voting member who missed the meeting may be inclined to abstain, as I did today. And if we have a close vote on any of these issues, it could create a problem in the meeting where we don't have enough, if it's a three to two vote and the person's not here, the alternate can't vote, then we end up two and two and we reverse the vote because we don't have the right voting structure. So it seems to me that I would like to, first, I don't think it's a rule, I think, I think we have the discretion to do it, that in future meetings where the alternate that voted on the issues in the prior meeting is present in the then subsequent meeting, that for those issues that we <clears throat> elevate that person for voting purposes for only those issues. Uh, I, I, I think it's that's right, everybody. I'm worried that this actually is um, subject to the, 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 the town's ordinance and the town's um, uh, 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 nomination process for, for, for boards. In other words, I think the town sets our rules on who votes in what meetings. Um, we always have a personal right of recusal, but when we're present, there's a structure that's defined in our charter as approved by the town for who votes in a given meeting. Um, again, in a given meeting, we can always recuse ourselves. That, 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 that we, 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 we retain that personal right. But then that's form of a function, right? I mean, abstaining and recusing is, it was just... No, 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 I, but, but, but so, that, so if today, for instance, if Kyle had been here, I would have recused myself because I didn't know anything about the issue. You didn't have to if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you didn't have to. Like no, but, I, but if I do recuse myself, then Kyle would be the person who would step in and, and vote. Now, it would, be, it would be silly to have Joe do it if he's the first alternate and Kyle's the second one, right? It, it just seems to make sense. Well, I'm not, I'm and I can't see how it could possibly interfere with any voting structures that would be in the town of Orleans. Again, I, 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 these come down to really two very distinct types of discussions. One is the minutes. And I, 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 I would expect all of us to be able to vote on the minutes even if we weren't atten in attendance because we have the ability to go and watch on one. And that, that should be our response. Part of sitting on the board is that we take the time, even if we can't attend in person, to understand what occurred at a given meeting. And so from a minutes perspective, I think we should all always be available and ready to approve the minutes of, of, of a given meeting, even if it's solely on the basis of having watched um, the, the, the uh, the hearing on, on online um, in in the in the previous few weeks. So for minutes, I don't. And I'll be honest with you. I really don't see a reason for minutes to be recused for being for for, for being a standing a vote or anything like that. Either the minutes reflect what we said, and we can all agree what we saw on TV and what we remember, or they don't. 
The other ones are on the findings of fact. And in that one, um, again, the, the, the board votes on um, in, 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 in the moment, and that's the vote that matters. Um, it's not the, we approve the finding of facts as, a, as an endorsement of how staff has chosen to summarize our discussion in, in the findings. But the vote that we took in the meeting prior is what is the, it, it, what is the act that, that, that advances the appeal or doesn't advance the appeal. So the only thing that, and, and again, that comes much more back to the, like the minutes. If the findings of fact as written by staff, we feel doesn't reflect what we actually voted on, then we should come back and say, Brian, rewrite the bill. Um, or you, know, you could amend it on the spot. Or amend it on the spot, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's um, what we do. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But, um, but we're not revisiting. We're not revisiting the, the vote on the final vote itself. Exactly. exactly. The vote has just taken place. The right it's our, do we feel that that language reflects what we already voted on? We're not reopening the case. Mm -hmm. um, does it reflect what we voted on? Right. Um, and does it reflect the vote we took? In fact, five nothing or four one or three two or whatever the vote was, actually was. So again, I I I, I think both of those items. Um, effectively act purely as ministerial actions that we should be expected to be able to rule on simply by watching the video. If we don't watch the video, and granted, it's for this meeting, other than the last 20 minutes, um, we can watch this video in 40 minutes and find a way to do it. There have been meetings where you would have to sort through four hours of video, and you might not have the chance to do in which you say, listen, I wasn't at the meeting, I didn't have the chance to vote on it, I gotta abstain on this one, I just didn't have the chance to do it. That was a perfectly valid mm -hmm. reason. But for, for like a meeting like tonight, both the minutes and the, finding, uh, and, and the, the final um, uh, 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 draft written decision meetings, I would expect all of us to be able to, to, to watch it. I'm, I'm confused. I mean, who would you rather have vote on the minutes? I, uh, just, I mean, would you rather have the person who attended the meeting and participated, or would you rather have the person who watched it on television vote? We're all in interchangeable. No, I, there's I, no I, difference I, between an alternate no, actually, and, the, and the member. There is because we are approved by town council as differentiated members. So I would rather have first the five approved voting members vote, and only if one of them is not present have one of the alternates step up. Because that's what the town council has not that's who the town council has nominated, approved and endorsed and approved. So I don't think we have the right to to accelerate that process. That that's 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 the endowed right of, of the town council and its nominated committee. But you, in, you are doing that when the member abstains. That's their personal right, though. But, but, but once, you, once you abstain, there is no mechanism at that point to elevate the, altern the alternate. You don't say, I abstain. OK, Joe, what do you think? We have the voting members, and now we're in a 2-2 situation at this 3 2 two is in favor. I, I thought it goes to one here. Just a question, uh, Brian. When we're approving minutes and we're approving the language of the findings of facts, uh, the decisions have already been made on the findings of facts, okay? Is a form necessary at that point? Yeah, I think we still have to have a form. So you have to have a form. You have to have a form to do any board business. So we need, to have, we need to have just a minimum of four voting members okay. you know, to vote. And that can include people who weren't actually physically here or right. whatever. Yeah. We have the opportunity to review the YouTube or to just at least become familiar with the facts. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and Richard, I, 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 I just fail to see this as a practical issue. Um, but even as, a, as an impractical issue, it's, it's, it's one where we, we are given our authority by the town. The town considers who they elect as, as or, or who they you know, elect, I guess, as voting members and alternate members. Um, we, we've got to respect that chain of authority. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. It's that when a member is either abstaining or recusing himself or herself, 
<clears throat> we could end up in a situation where we cannot approve something that was approved in the prior. Because the doesn't get approved unless the uh, doesn't get approved unless that's a majority of the members voting, president voting. And again, but the only two types of things that would be subject to that would be minutes and prior draft written decisions, which again, the, the only way you would have the ability to vote against those is if you watch the video or were more present. So, so my, my, my point is, is it, but, 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 even, but, even if I disagree, even if I had voted against that finding of fact last meeting, I can't vote against, I should not be able to. My, my, our duty is not to vote against the draft finding. Our vote is to approve the draft finding because it reflected what we actually voted on. I see what you're getting. So yeah, it was a 2-2 two -two vote last time, or a 3-2 vote, or whatever, you know, as you were saying. Um, but when we then approach it at the next meeting, it's either a 5 nothing vote to approve the draft, the, the final finding, or it's say, Brian, he didn't write it correctly. Um, we've got to go back and amend it in the meeting, or do whatever we have to do, but it's, it's simply a, a it's simply a, a, a push forward. It's like the voting for this. It's exactly like voting for this. So, so. Just, I, I think, Richard, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I just want to understand. You're concerned that there's almost like a potential for double jeopardy for an applicant where they're approved and, and then they come to a meeting and because of somebody having to abstain from a vote or whatever they have, they'd be in jeopardy again of not having the original decision approved. Yeah, I, I think I was thinking in terms of the second vote as being similar to the first. Okay. But as Peter's just describing it to me, yeah. that's not the case. No. So no. I'm, I'm okay now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're voting on did Brian's final wording of what we found to be fact reflect what we actually found to be fact? Um, it's not the final fact. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. The devil's in the details. It is. This is, uh, this, <laughs> and, 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 and words matter, as we all know. So um, thank you, and, and it's good that we go through these issues. So thank you very much. Um, any other comments today? We managed to get a full hour meeting, even though I tried to get a, like a 35 minutes, but okay. It's my fault. <laughs> um, terrific. If there's nothing further, um, may I have a motion to adjourn? There's David. Second. Second. We'll give it to Christine. Any objections? None. Speaking is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.